All right, everybody. It's time to talk about non-beginner weaponry. And today I'm gonna to be doing primary weapons. Now, before I begin this, I should kind of uh, go over where I am and what weapons I have completed. Uh, weapons with this little symbol on them are weapons I have completely ranked up. You, as you can see, I have pretty much all of the weapons done, excluding the arc wing weapons, I'm only missing two, and I don't really care about the arc wing stuff, as I don't think that system is completely fleshed out yet, and needs more refining to be considered done, and I'm not going to really judge it until it is more fleshed out. So we're only excluding in this like going over of, uh, of the primary weapons things that are either not acquirable currently or weapons that I have not done which includes the comb and the parasist both weapons however I will say I have heard are not that fantastic or very amazing most but I've heard a lot of that they are very gimmicky but including that uh, the first thing I want to go over is all of the mastery rank locked weapons so we're going to go in order uh, from Mastery Rank 3 and onward, anything below Mastery Rank 3 I will not be going over because I will consider those two weapons, I believe, the Karak and one other, to be beginner type weapons. You will get to Mastery Rank 3. It's almost a, like a 100% guarantee. So I'm just going to go over weapons that you get at 3 and beyond. Uh, luckily, in 3 we only have one weapon, the Gorgon. Uh, the Gorgon has the de disadvantage of being a login reward. However, at Master Rank 3, the Gorgon is a very solid weapon. Uh, because of ammo mutation, now, if you have a rifle ammo mutation, the Gorgon is a fairly efficient weapon to be using that does good damage and has a high clip capacity and can mow down a large variety of opponents. More effective on Corpus because of the impact damage, but you're going to kill pretty much whatever you're shooting at eventually because you have so much ammo and can shoot so fast. Downsize is that this weapon is a little bit inaccurate. So for people that aren't really looking for like a heavy weapon that deals lots of damage, you're probably going to want to avoid this. But it's pretty good overall. I used it for quite some time whenever I was starting out and it was just in the market that I could purchase it. So if you roll it, give it a shot, you'll probably enjoy it. Alright, on to Mastery Rank 4 weaponry. Alright, now we have the Dara. The Dara is mastery rank locked to 4, and you have to research it in the dojo. Most likely your clan will have everything researched. Uh, on the off chance that they don't, you will need to research it in your dojo. Uh, assuming, though, that you join a clan that has everything researched, or you've done so yourself, in which case you are probably much higher than mastery rank 4, the Dara is a very solid weapon. It shoots in a completely straight line, provided you do not mod it so that it does not shoot in a straight line. And it does good damage with a very good fire rate. Uh, status and critical are on the low side. Magazine is in the mid-range of an assault rifle, which is very good. Uh, the one downside that the Dare has against, say, the Bratton, or... Yeah, the Bratton's... Bratton or the Karak, we'll go with those two, is that the shots have travel time, so it's something that you will need to get used to because your bullets aren't just going to be instantaneously hitting your enemy, they have to get to the enemy. But if you're aiming correctly, every single one of those shots is going to hit because there is no, like you're, you're never inaccurate, it's always hitting exactly where you're shooting, which is helpful. Also, as a bonus, the Dara is kind of stylish and its reload animation is really cool looking. So if nothing else, it's a vanity thing. It's a cool weapon, I like it a lot. I also use this weapon for a time. All right, the heck. The heck is the big daddy of shotguns, as in it is the only shotgun you should probably ever be using, unless maybe Boar Prime. Possibly. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, the heck is a high damage shotgun, and because of the quality of shotgun mods being generally significantly higher than a uh, assault rifle or other primary assault assault rifles. We'll just say assault rifles. There's the Opticor and like weird weapons that are still in that category, but we'll just say assault rifles. Uh, the shotguns are much higher quality in terms of modding. Uh, the heck also has the added benefit that if you are with Steel Meridian and have access to their weapon mods, 
the heck gets another bonus 100% multi-shot, which is large for a shotgun. That is a lot of damage. And this weapon will also heal you when that effect goes off. So the heck immediately has bonus points if you were to acquire that mod, which also is not an expensive mod, particularly. And you can, uh, just like using no forma whatsoever on the heck, you can very easily make it so that every time you fire, you're doing like 10,000 plus damage. It's a very, very strong weapon. Um, also has good status chance, so proccing is effective, like for the large majority of the time. And er in the early game, it has a very high puncture, so fighting Grenier, which I would consider to be the hardest faction, it's just instant killing those like large like bombards and stuff that become a problem in the early game. So the heck is very very strong. If you are inclined to use a shotgun, this is probably the shotgun you're going to be using. That anything that gets close to you will die. And anything that's maybe 20 meters away is also probably dead, too. Alright. Sort of the weird one in the Master Rank 4 range is the Ignis. This is a flamethrower. It's, it's a flamethrower. If you're gonna go kill Invested and don't have, like, an AoE frame, or you really like flamethrowers, this is a good weapon. There's not a lot I can say about the Ignis, because I really don't like it that much. Uh, it's okay. Heat damage isn't very effective on its own. It needs mods. The damage you're going to be outputting, even when it's fully modded, isn't going to be that high without Forma. Like, you'll get some damage out of it, but, like, it's more limited range than the heck and many other shotguns for that matter, unless you have Firestorm, which is a rare mod you probably will not have around Master Rank 5 unless you specifically hunt for it or get lucky. Uh, so the Ignis kind of falls short in terms of like being a weapon you would immediately want to go like craft the moment you are able to. The Ignis is just okay, but if you've got a penchant for flamethrowers and lighting shit on fire, if you're part of that red veil, like let's just coat the world in flame, have yourself a heyday, it's a usable weapon. It's okay. Not fantastic. Alright, moving from the oddball of the Master Rank 4 range straight into the Master Rank 5 oddball, we have the Amprex. This weapon is weird. It is a critical hit weapon, which means you will be building immediately. Your The first mod you put into this is probably going to be a point strike completely maxed out, because you will be constantly critting, and very not rarely, red critting, all of your enemies, crit chance is very, very high. And that's good because it needs to be very, very high. The general damage output of the Amprex without critical is pretty low. Adding in critical, though, and with the effect of the Amprex, which is to arc to other an eh, eh, enemies and hit them also, makes this weapon really effective at crowd control, much better than the Ignis at killing infested with the correct damage type. You can just, like, just shoot it at a crowd and it'll just kill everybody enemies that are bunched up in hallways in like small contained areas the amprex does a really really good job of killing all of them coupled with a mirage or a frame that can boost your damage this weapon becomes very very deadly very very quickly it is a bit on the ammo inefficient side so you will need a maxed out like ammo mutation in it or bring ammo packs with you on missions but it's on the high side of weapons that are usable and a little bit gimmicky. I would say that it's definitely a very good weapon, but the Master Rank 5 range is very competitive for good weapons, which we'll get into now. Alright, the Grinlock. This is a single shot rifle. It is also a very good single shot rifle, much better than the Latron. Uh, its downsides are that it has a low magazine size and its crit rate chance could be better. I expect that to be fixed with a Wraith version or some other version of this weapon later on. And also, there is a Parent Sequence mod that can increase the critical chance by quite a bit and make it a fairly usable critical weapon. Ordis, I'm thinking about the Grinlock right now. Uh, the Grinlock's damage is quite high and stays that way for the like good majority and building it critical and damage is very viable and when you get those criticals they're going to hit very very hard which is really useful. Grunlock is very accurate 
and its fire rate is reasonable, but the reload time is a bit on the long side. Uh, for someone that is looking for a single shot rifle and does not want to use a sniper rifle because they are kind of shitty, uh, you would want the Grenlock as it is a very usable weapon, even in tight quarters. You'll have a good time with the Grenlock and you'll be able to ping enemies just right off the line from a good distance away. It's a very good weapon. I consider it to be probably my favorite single shot weapon. That is not like a rocket launcher. We'll get into that too. Alright, also coming in on the high side in this Master Rank 5 range is the Sybaris. This is the double two-shot burst fire weapon that has really good damage, a fair critical chance, decent status, pretty good reload time, and its magazine is a reasonable size for the damage it will output. Uh, its critical chance gets into the 60 to 70 range, which is fairly consistent, not as consistent not as consistent as I would personally like, but its damage normally when you're not critting is enough, and it shooting two bullets every time it fires greatly helps its chances of scoring a critical hit for a lot of damage. Overall, this is probably the best burst fire weapon, especially if you're going to form it. Because you like it spirals kind of into the... There's not enough... like because of the way its uh, polarities are you're not going to have enough to fit the mods that you definitely want to put in it so forming it is suggested but not required I did not form a mine and it was still doing quite a bit of work on its own even in tier 4 exterminates, defenses, the things I was taking it on so it's a good burst fire choice I think one of the best easily in competition with the Burstin and the Tiburon and I like its aesthetic a lot really cool looking. So, bonus points there. Now let's move on to Mastery Rank 6, the most important of the Mastery Ranks. Alright, Mastery Rank 6 this is where we're going to start getting into our high explosives. First up, the Penta. The Penta is a grenade launcher that you can fire up to five grenades and they can be remotely triggered at just the right moment. The nice thing about this is that you can use the Penta to set up an area that you know will have enemies in it, such as in a defense or in a similar mode like survival, and blow them up all at once. The other advantage is that this is innately an area of effect weapon. So launching it into the middle of a crowd and blowing it up is incredibly effective. The other incredibly effective thing about this weapon is that its damage is very, very high. Now, however, its ammo pool is a very, very low. You will receive 25 shots, counting the ones that are in your magazine, so, you will need an ammo mutation mod, because you're not going to be picking this ammo up terribly often, but you don't need a very high rank ammo mutation mod to keep the ammo in the gun. Uh, generally, this weapon is used from maps that have lots of high places, or with frames that are generally above their opponents, and you can just wreak havoc and kill pretty much everybody. High damage combined with area of effect make this... A really good choice, especially if you uh, are into explosives. Speaking of being into explosives, this is the Augris, the rocket launcher of the game, or one of them. The other one is a rocket launcher of a, a different sort. Uh, the Augris does insanely high damage. When fully modded, this weapon will kick out like 30 to 40k damage and is absolutely devastating, especially with multi-shot, firing more than one rocket and just completely annihilating anything that you hit with it. Uh, this weapon is incredibly good at instantly clearing groups. Downside as a charge time, which means that you're paying the charge time to have significantly higher damage than the Penta. Uh, most bosses that do not have invincibility stages will instantly die when you shoot them with the Augurus. It is a very devastating weapon, good for clearing groups. It's it's a good it's a good gun. It blows shit up. There's not like it's a rocket launcher. There's not a whole lot I need to do to probably convince you that it's a good solid weapon. Uh, I should also say, and I forgot to mention on the Penta, but this is kind of retroactive for uh, pretty much all of the explosive weapons. This can kill you, so don't fire it at your feet. I mean, this should be kind of self-explanatory. Don't shoot a rocket launcher at your feet. But for those of you maybe coming from TF2 or something, it doesn't work that way. It will just kill you. Alright, the Flux Rifle, getting into our Mastery Rank Continuous Weapons. 
Uh, the flux rifle, for a long time, I thought it was one of the better weapons. Something happened with the damage calculations of continuous weapons, and for some reason it just felt like it wasn't as consistent, or wasn't doing as much as it was previously. But, I still think it's very usable. If you're into, like, the sweeping laser type thing, like, just cutting guys up, and just generally, like, if, if you would, like, beam weapons, essentially, and you just kind of want that aesthetic, the flux rifle is still very, very useful. It's definitely not the best thing in MR6, especially compared to the other continuous rifle we will be talking about that is a bit different. Uh, its range is okay. Uh, you're not going to be sniping guys with the flux rifle. Its cutoff is pretty close. It's You'll fire down a hallway and then not much farther than that which is good for the majority of the content in Warframe, but in certain situations you'll find that your enemies are just out of reach and still shooting you, which is a downside, which we will talk about more on the next Continuous Rifle. All right, the Synapse. Now, much like the Amprex, this is a critical high weapon with low starting damage. It is incredibly effective at killing guys very, very quickly the downside is that its range feels, I don't know if this is exactly the range we're like looking at here, it feels shorter than a ge like generally you will be killing guys with a shotgun. Its beam length is not very far. This can be fixed with mods, but I think you would be sacrificing too much damage and could use other weapons instead to receive higher damage at much larger ranges. It's not to say the Synapse is a bad weapon. If you are into the infested look of a weapon, the Synapse is one of the much better ones. I think it's got a lot of merit and that it burns through enemies very quickly when it's touching them. It's a good gun, mostly for the infested aesthetic is the reason I would use it if I was looking for that. But overall, it's certainly usable. Maybe moving it to Master Rank 5 or something would make it more appealing but at master rank six there's already so much good stuff that it's hard to pick this over the others all right to go along with what i just said about the synapse this is another infested style weapon this is a shotgun put that in quotation marks this is the tickle tentacle gun it shoots out these long tendrils that kind of spray throughout the map and you can use shotgun mods with this weapon i will reiterate on that uh, and it is just continuous, uses very little ammo. You could completely forego using any type of ammo mutation on this weapon if you wanted. Its ammo consumption is incredibly low. It does viral damage innately, which is a very good damage type, considering its proc. Uh, its status chance is good enough to support that, and its critical chance is not something you'll be building for. So this is going to be a pretty much raw damage, continuous weapon, and since you can change the spread of the tentacles coming out of it, it makes it effective in multiple scenarios. The tentacles are roughly as long as the synapse can shoot far. So you'll have a good range and you'll be able to kind of crowd control entire hallways with certain damage types put onto this weapon. It's a very effective weapon that I enjoy. It's a little bit gimmicky, but it's a gimmick that works well in the scenarios that you're generally presented with in Warframe. So I would rate this as a it's the second most usable shotgun class weapon i think the heck beats it out in just general usefulness but the phage is not something that someone will be using you'll be like well why is that person using that weapon it's terrible it's perfectly usable and does pretty high damage now i did save the best for last this is the soma now those damage numbers might look very ineffectual, but that critical chance of 30% and that base critical multiplier of 3 make this weapon absolutely outstanding. With a max point strike and a max... Shit. I don't remember the names of those mods. Anyway, with a critical build, the general critical build of this weapon, you will get your critical multiplier above 7, and your critical chance will be in the range of 70 to 80, which is really, really good. Also, this weapon has a magazine of 100, and the longer you're shooting it, that fire rate only gets higher and higher. 
This weapon, especially if you're getting headshots, rips through enemies. It is devastating to groups of enemies. You just spray, like, you can just spray and kill everyone until enemies are quite a high level. This weapon will just absolutely tear them up. It's certainly the best mastery rank locked weapon, and it has seen a lot of use. Uh, this weapon is, I would say, very close to the top in terms of being the best weapon in Warframe. There is one weapon that we are about to talk about very soon that I think just barely nudges out a defeat for it, but the Soma is outstanding and is much easier to acquire in the vast majority of cases for people. Alright, now that we've finished up talking about Mastery Rank Lock weapons, let's start with the Primes. First up is Boar Prime. Now, the original Boar is only available in a pack from Steam that you can buy that includes Rhino and I believe uh, the Furax Gauntlets. Uh, the original Boar is okay at the very beginning of the game. However, the Boar Prime, I think this is one of the weaker Primes in that if you're looking for a shotgun, this weapon is fine. But if you're at the point where you are just going to get primes, pretty much all of the other competitors in this category are going to immediately beat it out just based on usefulness alone. Uh, the boar has a slightly bad ammo economy, which immediately lowers how good it can be. Uh, its critical chance, not fantastic. Status is okay, but that's not really what we're looking for in a shotgun. What we're looking for in a shotgun is for it to just kill that guy right now, not later, kill that guy that's standing right there. Uh, the boar somewhat delivers on that, but with its ins like insufficient amount of ammo that you'll generally be using on like groups of enemies, uh, it's not fantastic. I definitely think it's one of the weaker primes, especially in the primaries only category. In the secondaries category, we have weaker primes, but we will talk about that in a different video. So I would say the boar prime is maybe not one that you would want to build first. Costing 10 Oroken cells, especially for someone who's just starting out and searching for things in the void, definitely not a good fit. But if you are somewhere in the range of mastery rank 4 or 5, maybe you want to build this weapon. If, if you can't access some like higher tier MR6 things that you're probably looking forward to, it can get you there. It's okay. Alright, this is the Bratton Prime. You may realize that this is simply a Bratton that is prime. Yes, it is a perfectly usable assault rifle that just got buffed, so it is good on damage, good on fire rate, good on status chance, got a good size magazine, its reload is quite short. This weapon is not outstanding really in any specific department, but if you're just looking for an assault rifle that you can point at a guy and shoot him until he dies, this is certainly one of your better options. The, I think that as a base, if you're just looking to do raw, non-critical damage, the Bratton Prime is going to beat the Soma, but if you are looking to do massive critical damage, the Soma will instantly beat the Bratton in most cases. Uh, if you have access to a Bratton Prime, I would suggest giving it a try. It is a perfectly usable weapon. And if you would enjoyed the if if your favorite weapon that you've used so far in the game is the regular old Bratton, you're just getting the better version of the regular old Bratton. There's no downside. Go pick one up. All right, the Burstin Prime. Now, if you like burst weapons, this is a really good weapon. This weapon uh, currently has a mod from the Arbiters of Hexus that increases the fire rate by 80% and also makes it so that this weapon can heal you, which gives it a huge edge over the other burst fire weapons. Uh, with that plus 80% fire rate, this weapon has no time between bursts that I can notice, uh, so it makes it so that you can burst as fast as you can aim and shoot. This weapon is incredibly accurate and you will, you will not miss very often. Its status chance is respectable for a burst fire, and its accuracy is incredibly good. Fire rate as a base is good, not great for a burst fire weapon, but with that specific mod from the Arbiters of Hexes, it takes this gun up a tier in that you're doing so much more because you have that mod. Otherwise, I would say that the Sivirus is generally a better burst fire gun, but if you have access to that mod, I would certainly suggest this over that. 
Uh, the Burstyn Prime also has parts in Arokan Derelict Defense, which makes it easier to acquire, which moves it up just a tad. Think if you like burst weapons, this is my preferred burst weapon as a go-to if I need to use a burst weapon. It's definitely usable. It's definitely in competition for the best burst fire, and it's very solid overall. All right, the Latron Prime. Now, I will immediately say I don't really like this weapon. Uh, at the point where you will get this weapon in when you're going into the void and doing those missions and getting these parts, unless you really like single shot weapons, you have better options. Now, if you're looking to specifically get a single shot weapon that isn't the Grinlock, then I guess this is your next best option. But overall, I think this weapon is kind of on the weak side of the Primes. It's definitely usable, and you can definitely get some high critical damage going in there. And its fire rate is okay, its magazine size is really low. But in, in the types of groups that you'll be fighting, the Latron already doesn't do very well. And it just doesn't do enough for being a Prime weapon. I think it's definitely weaker. And you're not getting like a bonus of like very high status. Its status is okay. I think it should be higher for like the relatively small amount of damage you're kicking out with the relatively like tiny clip and rounds that you're like getting out of it. It's very ammo efficient, but at some point that kind of stops the stops to matter whenever you're using a prime and you generally have ammo with you in the mission. All right, Paris Prime. This weapon is super fantastic. Uh, it is a bow, which in the end game, and there are two bo two bows that I consider end game: this bow and the dread. Now, this bow is way less luck dependent to get than the dread, making this relatively amazing. Uh, its critical chance goes up to, I believe, 125%. So you will be getting red crits with this weapon on like the easy. It's very easy status chance is pretty good its damage is outstanding getting those red crits you'll be hitting headshots for like 20k plus damage it is devastating to single targets with thunderbolt this weapon could potentially be used to clear out groups somewhat in effect like it not very like efficiently or reliably because thunderbolt i don't think goes up to a high enough rank to make that very very viable However, it can be used that way, and because it does so much damage, I think that this weapon is easily usable, and you'll like be picking off primary targets, like very high-level heavy gunners, for example, will take tons of damage from this, and you'll be killing them well into the 90s. It is a very solid, very usable, very good prime weapon. All right, let's talk about the current poster boy of the Primes, the Boltor Prime. This is the weapon that is being considered, along with Soma, or to some people not along with Soma, as the absolute best weapon in the game, and I would pretty much have to agree on all counts. This weapon has a good magazine size, a really good fire rate, really good damage. Its reload is short and quick, and it's got tons of damage potential. Uh, it's... There's not a lot I can say that's bad about this weapon. Innately, if you kill an enemy, they will fly back, and they also count as a damaging projectile that can hit enemies behind them. That's a bonus. Downsides, this weapon has travel time. Travel time is a very, very short, and this weapon is pretty fucking accurate. So you will be pegging guys down very fast with just a basic-ass damage build with this weapon. It does a lot of work. The Boltor Prime is super strong. And if you, ha if you have this, I would generally suggest it over the Soma because its damage is also very, very consistent. You're never going to roll like a low number where you don't get a critical or something because its damage is just consistently like very high. You're going to be killing anything that isn't in like long, long defenses or long, long survivals or long, long interceptions. It absolutely devastates. The parts are rare. It's good that they're rare everyone shouldn't just have this because then we would all only be using Voltor Prime. It's an outstanding weapon. If you have it, use it. I don't know why you're not using it. Alright, 
I do have three special weapons that I'm going to talk about in the primary category that don't fit into being a Master Rank Locked or a Prime. First of them is Dread. This is Stalker's Bow. This is the aside to the Paris Prime. The advantages of this are pretty much exactly the same, with the bonus of having higher critical and status chances. So basically, you're just going to hit red crits more often. And its primary damage is Slash instead of Puncture, so it's very effective on Corpus and Infested enemies. Also, at the very uh, high end of damage, uh, doing a ton of slash damage all at once will make your slash proc, and then that goes through everything and essentially does true damage, or finisher damage in uh, general terms, I suppose, uh, which can be very, very useful later on when enemies need to be killed in less conventional ways with status procs, generally. Uh, it's a very, very good weapon. Uh, I think its aesthetic is better than the Paris Prime, and I think one of the reasons it is better than the Paris Prime is that it doesn't block as much of your view when you're aiming with it. It's a much more constrained design that you can see past easier. That is m more of a ease of use thing than like a stat-based thing or any of that, but I think it's part of what makes the weapon good. And this is, in my opinion, the best bow in the game easily in competition with the Paris Prime. All right, the Opticor. This weapon was recently released, but it is definitely worth talking about. Now, at face value, these stats look really, really good. They get even better when you realize that once this weapon is fully charged up, it does double those stats whenever it has no mods in it whatsoever. This weapon does a ton of damage to single targets, and it does a small AoE for lesser damage, meaning that it is pretty consistent in clearing groups of weaker enemies, and for stronger enemies, you'll be doing devastating damage specifically to them. This weapon fits a niche where it's it's got a lot of versatility in terms of, say, for infested, you want to blast that healer, but you've got all these like little guys to deal with. This weapon can do that all in one package. Uh, it's definitely on the high end of damage, the very high end of damage, and it is a good choice for killing, say, capture targets or bosses. You'll be killing them in one, maybe two hits, and it is overall quite fantastic. Alright, last on this list of special weapons that are not Master Ring Locked or Prime Locked is the Galaxion. The Galaxion fits a very special little niche where it's got very high status, so you will be inflicting statuses on enemies, but it has the added b benefit of no matter what elemental combinations you put on it, it always is immediately applying an innate slowing effect on enemies, meaning that its crowd control is really, really good. You're going to be slowing enemies to a damn crawl. And as with any punch through on this weapon whatsoever, you can just swipe across a group and they're all slow now. They are all completely slowed down. It is very effective. Uh, this weapon is ammo inefficient though, so you will need to bring ammo with you to keep it going generally. Uh, it's still very good. Definitely a good respectable weapon. The crowd control effects are what even put this weapon on the list. And its damage is not terrible. So it's very usable, mostly for the crowd control effects. All right, rapid fire round. These are primary weapons that you should avoid at all costs because they kind of suck dick. Uh, this is the Tetra. It is an assault rifle. That is terrible. Its stats are awful, and its accuracy is pretty shit. Its fire rate's real slow. It has no critical. Its status chance sucks. Its magazine size is okay at best, but nothing else is good about this weapon, so why the fuck would you use it? This is the Vectus. Shoot once, reload. Shoot once, reload. Shoot once, reload. That sucks. Its critical chance doesn't go to 100%, so you're not constantly doing massive damage. It's inconsistent. Not that great. Status chance, also not 100%, so you can't guarantee that. Damage is potentially good if you could get its critical chance to 100%. But guess what? You can't. You can only get close, making this weapon inconsistent and not... Like, it's not good enough. You can't... Like, you could justify this against a boss. That's it. All right, the Volcar. Copy-paste what I just said about the Vectus, except for this is the Volcar. It does mostly impact damage. That shit sucks against crazy enemies that have super high armor and are bosses. Why the hell would you use this? This is actually worse than the Vectus. All right, the Dragoon. This is a shotgun with a charge-up time. What the 
fuck is happening? It also has travel time? It has high damage, but that's not an excuse for a fucking shotgun that charges up? I have no idea what the intended point of this weapon does, but it needs to do about 20 times the damage it does for it to be usable at all. Alright, Sobek, another shotgun. This shotgun is rapid fire and does no fucking damage whatsoever as far as I'm concerned. It does mostly impact, which is the worst of the basic damage types. There's not a lot you can do to make this weapon any better whatsoever. I had a terrible time leveling it. Even the Syndicate card that goes with this weapon is garbage because from the same exact Syndicate you can get that heck mod. This weapon it has no purpose as far as I'm concerned and is just not a good gun. Oh hey look, a weapon that shoots saw blades. Too bad they have travel time and you have to charge it up. And you can't crit with them. This weapon is okay at its very best. It's a gimmick weapon, if you want to use it, go nuts. But it being a gimmick weapon, coupled with it dropping from a boss that is on Phobos and is a double boss fight, is kinda... It puts this weapon even lower than it would be already if... Don't go farming for this weapon. This weapon, you should not go far for it because it is not great and it is not very usable. Alright, this is the Torrid. This is the other rocket launcher I was talking about. Its projectiles hit, thing and do it, hit things and then do a set amount of poisonous gas damage in an area. That I know that damage looks high right now. It's not high. This weapon is specifically and only used for Vaubons that will put down a Vortex and then shoot the Torrid into it. That is its one and only use as far as I'm concerned. If you found some other niche use, that's fantastic. Doesn't matter. It's not worth the cost of building it, especially if you're looking for a good weapon that you can use a lot. Alright, this weapon has about the same versatility as the Heck, only it only has two shots in the magazine, and it fires both of them at once. It's essentially a shotgun that is a Vectus that doesn't do that much more damage than the alternative, which is the Heck. It's a cool, gimmicky weapon, but... It's just not great overall. Leveling it up kind of sucks, and its main damage is slash instead of puncture, so it's not that effective against the Grenier unless you're running four corrosive projections, in which case, sure, okay, but you've got better weapons if you have four people running corrosive projection. Okay, this is the Lenka. It is an electric only, or an electric originally damage type sniper rifle that has an okay critical chance and an okay status chance. Neither of those things push it over the edge. It has a charge up time, and it's just generally not very effective. It's a charge weapon that doesn't do insane damage, so obviously you don't want this. And it's like a pretty high master rank lock, so it's not a good choice. All right, the Supra. Low critical, low status, low damage, bad accuracy, decent fire rate, travel time projectiles. You can make this weapon work. I know you can make it work. It is not easy. It is not a good weapon. Holy shit. I tried. I really tried. I really wanted to like this weapon. I really did, because that mod that you put in it lets you get energy from it. But it's unusable, in my opinion. It is it's just got so much going against it that there, it's hard to want to use this weapon. It's very difficult. Alright, the Serenos. This is the bow that has the lowest critical chance of the more advanced bows, a very low status chance, has mostly impact damage, which is not good, and its critical is 35%. You're not getting it over 100 very easily, which is one of the primary things that the good bows at the end game are really good for is getting insane criticals which means this weapon is immediately worse also for those high powered enemies impact damage it ain't helping you there are very few there's a very limited spectrum of enemies that have super high shields and you're generally not bringing a bow to those fights so it's just not a good bow the other bows are quite nice but this is not one of them all right the buzz lock this is a gimmick weapon to the highest degree. If you zoom in and shoot an enemy, it will tag them, and then any bullets you shoot will go towards that enemy. This is not a guaranteed hit. If it was, this weapon would be much, much better. But having to zoom in and hit the enemy, and then not being able to zoom in and keep shooting, or missing and marking the wrong thing because the marker has travel time, and then having to remark an enemy before you can shoot anything because you'll just shoot towards that wall that you hit. It's a gimmick weapon. It's not very good. I wish it was good. It'd be nice if it was good, but the bullets aren't... It's not effective, especially not on groups. And even against bosses, because you would have to hit like the specific weak points of a lot of bosses, it's not going to work out for you. 
All right, the Attica. This is a crossbow. It works with Thunderbolt. It is sort of a gimmicky build. It's not particularly good. I would suggest this much later when you have the mods to make it very, very good. It can be good. Don't build it unless you know what you're building it for. All right, guys, that wraps up my primary evaluation for all of the weapons that I think are important down the line and are master ranked or weapons that you should avoid while leveling up. Uh, primes also and special weapons like the Dread, all covered. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to tell me I'm wrong and yell at me, please do in the comments. And if you like this video, maybe you subscribe, maybe you like the video, comment on it a little bit. I don't know, do whatever you want. I'm not the judge of you or the boss. Later.